And what about your power? How many seasons have you competed powerlifting, both of you? Um, I just kind of do them when I feel like doing them, and she's done them for a handful of years now. So if you weren't bodybuilding, so she's strict powerlifting. Can you? Is there really an offer on season huge difference with the way you train, with the way you're? No, I don't change anything. Just the same all the way. The only time that things change is like. Well, it doesn't even really change. I mean, I'll test my max like a week or more before a meet, and that's like it, but I could do that however often I want when I don't have a competition, so okay. it doesn't really change. Same oh, thing. so different. It's just yeah. I know. I want to learn. <laughs> I want to do. So, okay, what's the longest you, when you stop a bodybuilding season, you're at 160s or something, mm -hmm. and do you compete in powerlifting there, or do you wait till you're at the 181s or whatever? I actually did a powerlifting meet. All like the way down. After I had done a show, mm -hmm. yeah. Really? Yeah. Huh. So it's just it, I got a better coefficient that way. I actually bombed out of the meet because I had no idea that it was my hamstring touching uh, the bench press and not my butt, because I lost there my anymore. butt. So <laughs> nice. now I know. But um, yeah, and I always plan to do it that way. I plan to just do them at the same time. I mean, well, you're yeah. already lifting; exactly. you might as well. And if you do everything correctly or as close to correctly as possible, uh, you'd be able to perform, I think, pretty adequately. Okay. So powerlifting is, is, is very different because it's about the big day. The journey does matter, but not so much. Like right. With, like with bodybuilding, you're going to be able to look back and think about how you know you hustled with all your different you know times that you were working, how you made it all happen. And the big day is just kind of like the cherry on top and the party celebrating that. Mm -hmm. um, if I get a party. If. If you get a party, you might get a sandwich afterwards. A sandwich? <laughs> I just want a cinnamon roll real oh, bad. <laughs> That's what I'm working for. That's what I'm doing this for. 30 weeks for a cinnamon roll. That's it. That's what I'm doing. I was just talking to some friends last night that were in town about, they were like, so you just started this, right? So like you just learned how to count, like their minds are blown that I keep track of my diet on the daily, even for the year that I wasn't competing. How many years have you lived knowing your macros like 90% of the time? Oh, that's a funny one. I think forever, <laughs> my, my weight training was way ahead of uh, what I knew from a nutritional standpoint. And I think my first, when I got into my first contest season, I was just, I was miles ahead of, of most bodybuilders when it came to that. Uh -huh. But when it came to dieting, I think my first contest season, it was literally chicken breast. And then I would have Rice peanut, cakes, bu broccoli, peanut butter peanut in between <laughs> meals. So I, I actually did my first show at 190 pounds. And yeah, at uh -huh. about what I weigh right now. And the thing is I can fool people from the front. Uh -huh. Yeah, but from the back it was like, which as oh. Jeff calls it, it's cheeseburgers. Is what he calls it. Uh, so I've come a long way with that, and I'd say that that's the one thing that when I worked with Lane is the one thing I learned is that um, uh, how to be precise and why that matters. Because I think uh, you know we were still a little bit off, and I think mostly because of me, because what he inherited that year was a guy that Wasn't didn't nice. really count anything. I was getting like 400 grams of protein. My carbs are probably about seven, eight hundred. Fat was probably about two, three hundred a day. Uh, yeah. Jesus. yeah, so that was holding about about 205, 210 mm -hmm. at the time. And, um, you know, I, I told them my numbers were 100 fat, 300 carbs, 200 oh protein. God. So I lost like a champ uh, on the numbers that we started on, which were like 50, 175 carbs, and 240 protein. Oh my lord. Yeah, and, and the thing is, I didn't how did you feel? Yeah. I was so motivated, I, I didn't care. You right. know, I just, I didn't want to look as crappy as last year. And I think right. by the time I had been dieting for about six weeks, I was like, wow, I didn't look nearly as good as I did on stage last year. So I was sold. I didn't want to change a thing. Right. And um, yeah, I think ever since that point, um, you know, I saw I was just being precise with a formula that isn't exactly made for you, how the results that yielded. I just, it, it, it just, just led me to understand that, you know, Precision over the course of a long time and a lot of messing up, like the way you learned this off season, it, it leads to accuracy. Yeah. Um, so that's where I'm at with that. It's been about three and a half, four years where I've just really been on point with that. It's hard to explain to people. They're like, you know what you eat like every day, like for the whole year. But like, I can't imagine at this point in life not not exactly. putting something in my mouth and being conscious of it. Yeah. Even if I and if I am on those like. Like on a refeed, like today, I'm gonna get a Rice Krispie treat, and it's gonna be awesome. And I'm excited about it. But you know, like just knowing your foods, when you take the time to learn your foods, you don't mess up or get out of hand. 
Mm, you know the value like of a exactly. calendar the whole time, yeah. Because we were, <laughs> I went to a Kings game with my friends, my bring over, and we we're at Del Taco and I had my hot water because I was freezing, and they were all eating. But I took jerky and carrots to the Kings game, just for a snack, just because I knew I didn't want to eat till I got home. But they went to Del Taco, and they're the two, three guys in their minds. They're like, so you know what you eat all the time? They're like, so, and I was, and I was trying to put it in perspective because they were like, well. I would maybe went to sushi could have I was like, I wouldn't have eaten sushi. They're like, you can't eat sushi. And I was like, hold on though, it's not that I can't. So don't it's yeah. I have two hundred carbs a day, a sushi roll there was a hundred of it. Mm -hmm. So what am I gonna eat the rest of the day? Can I eat it? Yes. Is it smart? No. Not right now, at least. Right now, yeah, not right now. So the value of knowing food, I think like you said, I couldn't imagine living any other way now. Yeah, and it brings you back to the whole, you know, it's, it's the athlete making the decisions, kind of like in your training, and it teaches you to make yeah. the right decisions. And, you know, when, whenever I've worked with, which which I don't do anymore, I don't work with general population anymore, but sometimes right. my bodybuilder friends would be like, you know, hey, you know, I got, you know, my mom, uh, she needs to lose weight or she's going to get surgery. So, you know, I'll help out these people and I'll, I'll get them in a better place. And even if they stop counting at a certain point, it forever changes the way they view food. So if they had a slice of pizza at noon, they know that, you know, maybe I should have a dinner that's a bit on the lighter side. Right. So it's, it's yeah, it's, it's, it's not a stress. If anything, I think it's a wonderful tool to yeah. have. Yeah, and that's what I was trying to tell them is knowing your foods. Is it because... In the off-season, though, too, it's like I had to consciously... If I was... If I was having one of my binge days, I had to... Th Think I had to. Come, I couldn't count anything, like how some people will say, "I'm gonna have two cookies today," but as long as it fits in my macros, like I either need to be on point, or and if I'm going off, I have to mentally detach for that whole day or mm -hmm. weekend or it's a wedding weekend or whatever. I had to because if I even think about it, it's easily ten times over my normal. Like oh, mm -hmm. if I ate a whole pizza, it's easily. If I'm on forty grams of fat a day now, I'm in shit that day. I could pro or like. Bachelorette Fiesta 2012 for my roommate when I was on the river, I think I probably 10 to 15 times my calories that weekend. Oh my god. Wow. Because it's so easy to do when they're so big with how low they were. If I was 120 carbs a day, if I had half a pizza, or no, we went to a big barbecue place, there was family style, after I was, <sighs> yeah, it was just, anyways. Knowing your foods is valuable, I think is where I was going yeah. with that. Yeah. I think you're less likely to make a bad decision, you know? Right. Or get carried away, or, exactly, or know, the, you know, know right. what a bad decision yes. is, and, yeah. and just how that, what kind of dent that's going to be. Right, make. and I think now, even where I'm at mid-prep, and the smartest about food, I'm, like I said, 80 grams higher than when I was in off-season, and now I think I could handle going out and eating a couple slices of pizza in off-season, or having one big crazy dinner, Yeah. as opposed to, I would have to do... Like, I, if I have a crazy lunch, the next 48 hours were screwed because I was in such a carb frenzy mm -hmm. that, like, I couldn't... And, and that's when you have it made, when you can do that. When you just kind of learn to, to lose yeah. some control from it. And not give everything up, but just, you know, right. just be okay with being not in full control of the situation. And I think for a lot of bodybuilders, that's kind of hard to yeah. do.